Hello everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Herbert and in this video we're going to be setting up an OpenVPN access server on Ubuntu. Let's go over a few of the prerequisites, a few things to consider. We're going to be running this on a Ubuntu LTS server, so either your cloud VPS or your virtual machine at home uh, should have the latest Ubuntu LTS version running. We're going to be needing a domain name. So make sure that you have a domain name and also if you are running this at home and you don't have a fixed IP address, uh, you might be considering something like a dynamic DNS via uh, no IP, for example. We're also going to be setting up a DNS A record and that is in the case that you have a cloud VPS, in which case you will most likely have a fixed IP. Uh, but if you don't, if you want to run this at home, then you can also create something like a C name record and that C name record can then point to that dynamic DNS that you created via no IP to connect your own host name and make it a little bit more personal. We're also going to be setting up some firewall rules. So if you're at home, you enable these firewall rules on your home router and you can also use UFW as an extra firewall protection. If you run this on a cloud server, you can use the cloud provider's firewall uh, or power or port forwarding option. And also here again, UFW is optional, but we are going to use UFW in this guide because uh, our cloud provider doesn't offer uh, the option to do firewall or port forwarding. Um, well, at least not in a cheap and easy way. Once we're logged into the machine, let's go ahead and first update our Ubuntu server. And this is gonna take a while, so I'm gonna skip ahead. Now let's allow all of the firewall rules that are necessary, starting off with port 22, then port 80, and then port 443, and then port uh, 943. And then the final one we can do is 1194 slash UDP because we only want UDP protocol. And then after this, we still need to do sudo UFW enable and then we can do yes, and we should not be locked out of the machine because we did allow the port 22 for SSH. Before we go ahead and install OpenVPN, we have to install a few prerequisites, which are all of these things. Let's now go ahead and download the signature file, which we need. Next up, we will add OpenVPN to the sources list. And so now we'll perform another update and then we will install the OpenVPN access server with sudo apt install openvpn-as and then we will output that into an output log file and that output log file will contain the output of the OpenVPN installation and that's because we want to keep that in a file somewhere because it does contain the password of the OpenVPN administrator account. Now let's first prepare our certificates. Let's install certbot. Okay, now once Certbot is installed, we can start entering the Certbot command over here and make sure that your domain name is correct here. As you can see, I'm typing in vpn-test.herbertech.com, but that's not correct. I'm gonna correct it in just a second here. You'll see that the correct domain name for me was openvpn-test.herbertech.com, so make sure that's correct because Let's Encrypt is gonna to try to communicate with your server and if that's wrong, then this process will fail. You can enter your email address here and just accept these terms. And then the second one is, you can either do no or yes, it doesn't really matter for the second one. And now it's requesting a certificate and then it should give you this message that your certificate was saved at this location and that the key is also saved at a certain location. And so you'll just have to keep in mind where the certificate was stored and where that key was stored because we're gonna to need to copy that later. Let's now open that file, that log file that we created, and let's do Shift G to go all the way down to the bottom. And then we'll find at the bottom somewhere access server web UIs are available here. And we have the admin UI, which is the URL that we need. And take note of the OpenVPN account and the password, copy that as well. And just paste that into your web browser. And you'll get this notification that the connection is not private. You just proceed here. And then let's copy that password in here. Let's enter OpenVPN as our username and then that password and let's sign in. Let's just accept this agreement here. And now we are in the OpenVPN access server web console. Let's go ahead and change a few settings. Let's go into network settings here. Let's change our host name to the domain name, which in our case is openvpn-tests.herbertech.com. And let's only listen 
on the public interface, which is the top one for me. And then let's only listen on UDP. And let's change that port number to 1194. The admin web server can remain listening on all interfaces, or you can change it to listen only on your local interface. For the client web server, we'll change that to a different IP address or port, and we'll only listen on the public IP address. And then the port number can be 443 here. And that should be about it. Let's save those settings. Let's update our running server. And this might log you out here. We'll just need to refresh the page, and then we'll have to Log in again, continue. We'll just have to enter our same OpenVPN and then we'll have to copy that password again. Sign in. Let's go back into our configuration. Now let's go into VPN settings. Now let's change a few things here. So first of all, this can be the same, but for me, my private IP range is a little bit different. So I'll have to change it to uh, 10.0. 0.85.0 slash 32 save those settings and update the running server again again this is optional it just depends on what your local uh, ip ranges are let's first copy our certificates which you probably still remember the location of that can be at cert.pem don't copy the full chain just copy the cert only so we'll copy the certificate here then just copy from begin certificate to end certificate copy that and then just open notepad and you just paste that in there and then save that file somewhere now let's do the same for the private key so we'll do the same we'll cat the priv key.pem and then we'll copy begin private key until end private key and we'll do the same here we'll just copy that somewhere We'll open notepad and we'll just save that somewhere in a text file so we can upload it to the server. Now let's log back into the web server. Now go back into your web server settings and then change user provided certificate and then choose your certificate, which was the cert.pem file. And then the private key will be the priv key.pem that we saved. Just open that and then save the settings and then update the running server. And that should be about it for our certificates. And now we should be able to access our VPN server with a correct uh, certificate. Let's go ahead and check that. Let's go ahead and enter the URL with our host name instead of our IP address. And we can see that the certificate is valid over here. Let's uh, log in here and see if it works. This is the client web server, so we'll have to log into the admin web server instead. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now go into user management, user permissions, and let's add a new username. And we'll just call this Herbert Tech, for example. Then click on more settings, this little pencil here, and then you can select the password here. And we'll just select the password. We'll enter the password, and that should be good. And now we can save settings and we have a new user that we can use as a uh, client rather than a admin user. Last but not least, go into authentication, into settings, and then enable the TOTP multi-factor authentication and save the settings here. And I will have to update the running server again. And then we will uh, log out of the system. I will log in again with our username and password, and now it will request a six digit code. And this is the step where you can use your authentication app like Authy or Google Authenticator to enable that two factor authentication for the first time. So go ahead and enter that six digit code over here. And now two factor authentication is enabled for our admin user and we still need to do that for our client user. So let's uh, go ahead and change this URL again to the client web server. And we'll st we're still logged in from the previous time. So we'll log out and we'll use our username that we just created. And that will be Herbert Tech. And then our password here. And then we'll sign in. And it's going to ask us again for that six digit code. So go ahead and add that account to your Authenticator app as well. And enter that six digit code in here as well. Now go ahead and download the client for your operating system. And then just run that MSI file. And this is going to pop up, but that doesn't really matter very much. Just click next, next, and then install. Now you should have the OpenVPN client installed and it should pop up immediately. Go ahead and close this. Then click agree here and then click OK and then 
enable this connection and then it will ask you for the password again enter the password here and enter the six digit authenticator code from your authentication app here and then you can just click send and that should be about it we're connected now and let's go ahead and verify this on a website called ip chicken now it's a funny name but it's a good website to see what your public ip address is so you can see that my public ip address right now is the ip address from the server and if i do a ping towards my openvpn dash test uh, dash test dot herberttech.com we see we get a reply from that same ip address so that's about it guys thank you so much for watching and if you want to see more of my videos please consider subscribing and i'll catch you in the next one bye bye